Hey guys, welcome to Warhammer Stuff. So today we have 2,000 points of Chaos Space Marines, Emperor's Children versus Chaos Demons, Corn. So let's go ahead and check out the armies. All right, so for today, I'm bringing 2,000 points, or more specifically, 1,999 points of Cornate Demons with 5 CP. So I wanted to do something different. I wanted to focus more, I'm noticing that demons are really heavily focused on greater demons. So for today, I wanted to focus on horde and i believe corn is the best option for that so i have one greater demon scarbrand who is a very interesting greater demon of corn he doesn't fly like the other ones but he has some very interesting auras because he buffs even my enemies anyone within six inches of him gets one extra attack and you can't fall back without something to get your hand out of the way is it blocking and uh Yes, so he's a very powerful melee guy, and this is one thing I didn't pay attention to or notice, but in the Daemon Codex, Warp Locust is a very interesting and important uh, keyword, and all the named character greater demons have it, as well as the terrain. So Warp Locust basically allows for uh, demons to deep strike within 6 inches of him, and within six, uh, outside of 6 inches of the enemy. I thought it was only terrain, but all the named characters have this, so that's very important to know. And the Skull Taker. Very good fighter. He's an anti-character guy. Very strong. He gives some buffs to blood letters. And Karanak, this anti-psyker hunter, which can deny psychic powers as well. But uh, he basically marks an enemy character, and all of his wounds that go through count as mortal wounds instead. So he could easily take down a strong enemy greater demon or something. So he's a Probably one of the most powerful character killers I've ever seen. Uh, you have to choose which character he's going to kill, but he can pretty much wipe out, out anyone, even those stupid Archons with their two and vulnerable saves. And then for troops, a horde of six units of Bloodletters for holding objectives or for deep striking. We'll see. Then two units of Skull Crushers or Blood Crusher guys here. However, I accidentally clicked on the wrong model and, uh, when setting up one of the units, and so now they look like Flesh Hounds. But the rules are the same, and their bases have actually been increased to be the same size. So two units of these Blood Crushers. Then, for Fast Attack, I have Flesh Hounds. Two units, one of six and one of five. Very fast, very mobile. And then for Heavy Support, Two units of skull cannons. Uh, they're artillery, they're ranged, they could hold the back line, maybe. And that is 1999 points of cornate demons, more of a horde. All right, you guys, so here are my 2,000 points of Emperor's Children, uh, technically 1998 points, 1,000, anyway. Um, I also spent five command points on this list. Um, it's pretty command point heavy, so I only have one to start with. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out. So Master of Executions, I wanted to give him a try. He's technically not an HQ, he's an elite, but he is a character, so I, I brought him up here. Um, the only thing uh, out of his usual profile that he has is he has the Warlord trait Faultless Duelist. So uh, when he's making melee attacks, he rerolls hits, and he minuses an attack from enemies that he's within six inches of. Uh, to his left, interestingly enough, TTS did not have the model, so this is just a random... A random corn guy with a, like a bicycle arm or something i don't know um but uh this is lucius the eternal he is as is so um he's a pretty good uh killer fighter um i think he's good for, against characters as well um then i have my master of possessions who is my warlord um so he has a couple of things so he has the slanesh spell delightful agonies which is a feel no pain um, then he has Pact of Flesh and Warp Marked, so Pact of Flesh I put on a, a core or a demonkin or a character unit. They not only heal, um, but it also allows him to revive a core or demonkin model um, to full health, uh, you know, from the dead. So like a, a meta, um, apothecary. Um, and then he also has a spell that affects demonkin or demon engine models that gives plus one to wound rolls. He also has the Warlord trait, Loathsome Grace, which is two inches to his movement and reroll advance and charge rolls. Um, and then he has the Relic, Liber Hereticus, which allows him to manifest an additional power. And if he successfully manifests it, it adds six inches to the range of that power. So that's pretty cool. Um, 
And then Lord Discordant, I thought he was pretty cool. I thought I would give him a try. Uh, he's pretty as is, except that he has the Relic Fatal Sonancy, um, which at the end of my movement phase, uh, an enemy unit within 12 inches um, and within line of sight, I roll 66 and for every four up, they take a mortal wound. So potentially six mortal wounds every movement phase, um, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and because I'm Emperor's Children, all of my characters and core have to have the Mark of Slanesh, which means that they all fight first in combat, um, or they have the ability to. Um, so those are my HQs and characters. Um, moving into troops is just three units of s s noise marines, which I've always wanted to use them. I always thought they were really cool models. Uh, their models also have not changed since I started playing. 15 years ago, whatever it's been. So that's something. Um, but so the squad all have sonic blasters, uh, even the the champ, except for one guy who has a blast master. So the sonic blasters are pretty cool and sonic weapons, if you're within half range, add an additional damage. Um, so they're all assault weapons, except the blast master has the ability to be a heavy weapon if I want it to be uh, for that extra damage, um, which is pretty cool. Um, and but those are all my troops, so they're all the exact same. Um, my I have a squad of five possessed, and they are as is. You can't add anything to them or give them any icons or, or give them a mark or anything like that. So they are what they are. Um, the Chaos Terminators. Now these guys are a little more uh, elaborate this time around. Um, they have a mark of Slanesh because they are core, um, and so they have to have it. Um, but I have four Combi Melters in here, three Power Fists, one Chain Fist, and the Champ has two accursed weapons which gives him an extra attack um and then the squad has the relic black rune of damnation so every time an attack is made against that unit it's minus one to wound which i think is a big deal and not that this is relevant because he's corn but any psychers enemy psychers within 18 inches uh when they take a psychic test uh they suffer perils of the warp on any double so you know, whatever that is. Um, and so those are my elites, the possessed and the terminators. Uh, moving into fast attacks, I have a squad of six warp talents. I actually really like warp talents. They have a ridiculous amount of attacks. Um, and so they're they're really great to just run in and do whatever they're doing. Um, and then a venom crawler. I haven't used one yet. Um, so he's interesting because he buffs casters. Um, so he adds one to their psychic tests. And, well, actually, that's the only reason why he's interesting. He's just got, you know, guns and claws and stuff after that. But, uh, so he'll be interesting. Uh, and then moving into heavy supports is a squad of three obliterators. Um, now, these guys are really cool because they have, technically, it's one gun, but it has three different shooting profiles. One with a whole bunch of shots, um, one with a medium amount of shots and a medium strength, so strength seven, and then one with heavy strength, so strength nine and crazy damage. Um, and then they have some other stuff, but so they're pretty cool. Um, they don't have the mark of Slanesh, but they have these punchy hands as well. Um, crushing fists. So that's kind of cool. Um, and so this is 2000 points of Emperor's Children. All right. So for the objective, we got mission 2-2 conversion, which is control one, control two, control more. We gain, uh, for the secondary, we gain two points at the end of each turn if we control any one of the center or no man's land objectives. And we control f get four additional points if we control our opponent's home objective. And that is the mission and the battlefield here, the beautiful forest building area thing. So, Alright, so for secondaries, for the demons, I have Nourished by Terror and Reality Rebels. These are just like pretty straightforward. They're very uh, congruent with what the demons do. So Nourished by Terror, I get a victory point for every enemy model that flees, and every enemy has minus one leadership around me, so that pretty much uh, really just flows together well. Reality Rebels, which basically I get a point at the uh, end of my turn for each table quarter I possess, and including there's an extra one in the center. Uh, so I, as long as I have more models in it, which is very possible, and if I have someone coldly within the center, that's good. And then uh, the third is always the hard one to choose, so Assassination. He has four characters, so I'm looking at a possible of like 13 points if I wipe out all his characters. And that's the best one I could possibly do that I could think of. And that is all the secondaries for my side. Yes, so I have 
all mine are Chaos Space Marines, so I have Adorn the Canvas, which is the Emperor's Children specific one. Um, and essentially I have a list of things that will give me a point each turn. So the first one is with this one, I control more objective markers than my opponent, that's a point. Uh, more enemy units were destroyed by ranged attacks by Emperor's Children units than the enemies, that's a point. More enemies were destroyed in melee by my guys and his guys, that's a point. Um, and then more characters were destroyed by attacks in general um, by my guys than his guys. Um, and that's a point. And if I get all four of those, that's a, I, I get an additional point for a total of five. I don't know how likely those are, but anyway. Uh, then I have Rise to Glory, which is basically killing stuff with a character in melee. Either units, which is one point, or a character, vehicle, or monster, which is additional points depending on their HP or their wounds. Um, and then for the Dark Gods, um, so basically I have to get an infantry... Uh, a trader is a infantry or biker unit within three inches of each table quarter and they basically do uh, an, an operation um, a thing i forget the word for it um and i basically claim that table quarter for a, a specific deity corn nurgle zinch or slanesh um and it's basically a marker so it's kind of like uh, a chaos version of um Oh my gosh, I can't even think of the name. Anyway, not important. But so for each table quarter I get, I get a, a marker. And then um, one uh, tally is five points, two is nine points, three is 14 points. Or, you know, two victory points for one, sorry. Five for two, nine for three table quarters, and then 14 points for 14, for all four table quarters. Um, and those are my secondaries. All right, so for deployment for corn, uh, start with when with the very tight packed maps like this and stuff like that. Start with the big units to make way for them to be able to navigate through, and then the small units follow. And so he has a little bit of range, so I wanted to avoid having my guys getting wiped out like first turn or stuff like that. And then I wanted to be able to counter his movements with my heavy stuff. And uh, that's essentially what I did, uh, the ideas going through, and I, in the end, had three blood letter units in reserves, and one unit of flesh hounds due to the manifestation rules for my army. And, yes, and that's what I, and that's my ideas through deployment. Alright, so for me, um, I had... Well, a couple of issues. One, I was trying to avoid getting shot by his skull cannons. Um, I might have overcorrected for that in hindsight, um, but you know, whatever. I don't know. Um, but so basically, uh, I'm trying to take sections so and not get shot initially and kind of stay out of charge. He can't advance in charge as far as I'm aware, but he's not without a stratagem. So he shouldn't be able to get any first turn charges, uh, which should allow me to position myself pretty well because I'm fairly speedy but i guess he might be as well uh yeah he's he's just as speedy that's unfortunate um but anyway yeah so i was just trying to avoid getting hit or shot um before i've had a chance to do anything because he obviously has way more units than i do so i need to make sure they survive until they at least have a chance to do something that's it all right <laughs> so for going first um well, if I go first, I'm going to basically run from cover to cover, and you're going to have to push out in order to hurt me. That's essentially all I would do. If I go second, you might position some of your guns to hurt some of my guys, but then I will immediately move around that and hit the targets that are closest and be able to properly target uh, your guys with my stuff. So that's just, that's pretty much it. That's all I can think of I would do if I went first or second. That's pretty much what would happen. What about you? Oh, honestly, it's almost exactly the same thing. <laughs> um, if I go first, I'm basically going to move around from cover to cover and try not to get charged So, because I know you can't run and charge. So, you know, there's some base ranges that you can't get to, at least in the first turn. Um, and then you only have two guns which are the cannons, uh, so those are will be relatively easy to avoid, I think. Um, now, if I go second, obviously they'll be much easier to avoid because I'll know where they're at. Um, but 
<laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Um, if I go second, it would be easier, obviously, because it's always easier to respond to what the opponent's doing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, yeah, because then I can kind of redirect and retarget stuff and kind of try and manage it as I need to. But, yeah, so I'd rather go second, personally. Um, but I could still do some things if I went first. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright then. Then let us see where the game's gonna go. Right. Wait, my game turned... Oh, my thing froze right there. Aha! I got a six. Oh, wait. Shoot. What? Darn it! You rolled a one. Yeah. Oh, well, you rolled a six when you think it was gonna happen. Alright then. I, I was hoping you would also get a six. Mm. And then we would re-roll it. I was like, about to roll, but better. like the screen froze for a bit and then the dice just dropped. But it never yeah. rolled, so I was still good. And then it rolled a one. Alright then. Uh, Emperor's Children, turn one. Alright, you guys. So for movement, um, there's a little bit that happened. Um, some tough decisions. Um, because I don't really... Like, I know Korn is a heavy-hitting army in melee. Uh, so I was kind of hesitant on what to do because I did not want to get charged. Um, but, you know, whatever. Um, so my noise marines on the bottom right for you guys. So bottom right uh, and the terminators, they both ran, uh, basically moving up to try and get on objectives. The Lord discorded on Hellstalker. He had a gun, but I was like, I don't think it's actually worth it enough for him to shoot it with those three shots. Uh, as opposed to running. So he ran, he was able to take that objective, so I'll get that secondary. Um, the Possessed, the Master Possession, Lucius and the Venom Crawler, they all just walked, or, you know, they didn't run, I should say. Um, and they're still near enough to the middle, um, cause I assume he's gonna have stuff that's gonna run in there. Um, but they're also close enough to the Lord Discordant that if he survived a turn of whatever might hit him, um, then they could respond there just as well. Um, the Towards the top, the mar Noise Marines, the Warp Talons, and the Master of Executions, they all ran. Um, actually, the Warp Talons didn't run, but they all moved towards that next area objective. Um, and then the Obliterators actually opened up towards the middle because they have a perfect view of that Skull Cannon. Um, and then the Noise Marines on my home objective um, started my, my Emperor's Children specific secondary. Uh, no. That's not mission, the Emperor's Children one. The um, For the Dark Gods. So I'm going to claim that corner for Slanesh. Um, and that will be nice. And so that was my movement phase. Alright, you guys. So for my psychic phase, I started off by giving the Possessed a 5-up Feel No Pain with the Slanesh um, specific spell, Delightful Agonies. Then I tried to give them the Warp Marked. Uh, well, for Delightful Agonies, I rolled double sixes, which is a Perils of the Warp test. Um, and then, um, so he took one mortal wound. And then Warp Marked actually failed, so I rolled double ones, which was more mortal wound, more Perils of the Warp. But I used a command point to reroll it. Um, I rolled a six, I needed a seven. Um, so they did not get that. It would have given them plus one to wound. Um, and then uh, because he took the one wound, I was like, instead of smiting something, I'll just heal him back up. So I used Pact of Flesh. I rolled a nine. He tried to dispel with Karanak, and he rolled a six or a seven or something. So it yeah. went off. He healed him back up to full wounds. Um, and so the majority of the psychic phase was a waste of time. <laughs> Just the one five up feel no pain that went off. Um, and that was everything that happened. All right, you guys, so for shooting, um, just a lot of disappointment. So I started with the Noise Marines up top, um, the three Sonic Blasters and one Blast Master. Uh, they were able to do two damage to the Skull Cannon. Not great. Um, I was really excited for my Obliterators until I realized that they only had 24 inch range. So they're actually not in range of anything. Uh, and that was sad. So now they're just standing out in the open for no reason. Um, but, uh, then my Venom Crawler shot at his Blood Crushers, doing two damage, and then my Blast Master Noise Marine on the bottom right shot, and he did nothing as well. So uh, I did a total of four damage to shooting phase, nothing died. Um, really, just overall kind of depressing. Um, so yeah. 
All right, you guys, so for this turn, um, I have two points for conversion because uh, I was able to take one of the No Man's Land objectives. Um, and for the Dark Gods, the my home objective, I was able to secure that one. So I added one to the tally, which is at the end of the game will be two points, I believe, um, for right now. And so that was it for my secondaries. Um, obviously, there's no primaries. We will see how the rest of the game goes. All right, so for the movement phase, uh, well, actually, first the command phase, the Skull Taker made the orange squad that he's next to uh, get plus one to hit. And then after that, uh, my Karanak decided that his target for the game would be the Lord Discordant on Hellstalker. Since that's like his toughest character, Karanak's uh, special ability would do best against it. And so then I just charged or moved everything up. So on the left side, my blood letters ran, moving north up to get to the terrain to get into an area of support. The skull cannon moved up to get line of sight towards his sonic blasters and warp talents. And then the blood crushers there that look like flesh hounds moved up. They are touching the objective, so I have now claimed it. And, oh crap, I forgot to move Karn or Scar Baron. And then, uh, <coughs> then after that, in the middle, the orange squad of blood letters ran and made it on a 12 and went and got on the center objective. Skull Taker followed them. Uh, he rolled a he rolled a one. I spent a command point to re-roll that. He got a twelve total or a six, so he's got twelve inches total. And I moved him up so he would be safe behind them. Then after that, uh, yeah, my flesh hounds on the bottom moved up. They are within charge range of the Lord Discordant. Then the uh, what was that? The Blood Crushers moved up as well. They're also within range of a possible charge, maybe. Uh, then after that, the t after deciding a bit, the yellow blood letters move forward. I can't really do anything, but they're in a position, maybe a good position to do some things. And then, uh, and then Karnak ran, but he had no real where to really run, so he's sort of like in a standby 50-50 position, going north and south. And then the skull cannon moved up to take the objective, and I forgot to do it, but I forgot to move Scarbrand. But basically, he's just going to move towards uh, the biggest enemies. All right, so in my shooting phase, uh, at the top, the Skull Cannon fired at the Sonic Marines. Got four shots, got three wounds. He saved them all. Then my Skull Cannon at the bottom fired at the Possessed. Got five shots off, did four wounds. He saved them all. Then Scarbrand with a little pinky toe on the side, being able to see the tip of the pinky toe of the other Warp Talent, fired his devastating bellows thing and uh, did three wounds, which he immediately saved them all, or two wounds, and then saved them all. So, uh, horrible shooting phase. I rolled terrible for the amount of shots I have, and he saves every single one of them. All right, so for the charge phase, uh, I just had my Blood Crushers. They charged the Lord Discord on Hellstalker, and they failed. And I had a lot of spare command points, so I re-rolled it, and they super failed. And I had the Flesh Hounds try, and they made it on an 11. And so they made it in, and then we didn't show it, but he countercharged with his Master of Possession to get into them because they were within three inches. And that was the charge phase. All right, so for the fight phase, since he countercharged, I had two of my Flesh Hounds swing on his Lord Discordant. Uh, it just rolled bad, and they only did two wounds to him. Well, one only went through because they charge, they get one plus damage to their abilities. And then I had the four hounds, including the sergeant of the group, the gore hound, swing on the Lord Discordant. They did three wounds to it, which he failed all his saves, and so they did a total of six wounds to him. He spent a CP to re-roll, and he failed that. So, uh, Super that, was, yeah, that, was, that was funny. Um, and yeah, and then apparently his Lord Discordant does not bracket. He swung back and just obliterated the squad except for the gore hound sergeant. And, yeah. And is also his Master of Possession killed one as well. And that was the fight phase. Alright, so for the morale phase, uh, essentially what happened is my Gorehound, or last main of the Flesh Hounds, has to take a leadership check. I spent 2 CP to keep him there just so I can contest the objective so he won't claim it at the beginning of his turn. Right, yeah, thinking big here. And that, yeah, that's actually 4 points that I would stop him from getting. So yeah, I have spent it there. And uh, so... I could have spent my warp storm abilities to give my whole army plus one attack and that probably would have helped in the battle there but I just like I don't know what I was thinking I wasn't thinking about it that it wasn't gonna make any difference so essentially 
I didn't use it there, and so I decided to spend it because it resets at the end of my turn, the end of the ba uh, battle round. So I just spent the five of them to heal my whole army, and the only one who was wounded was the Skull Cannon, and he healed one wound. And uh, that was the morale phase. All right, for points, I did control at least one in the center, so I got two points for the mission. Nourished by Terror, none of his guys ran. Reality Rebels, I have uh, two uh, table quarters with more models than he does, and I do have a unit fully within the center, so that's three points. I have not killed any characters yet, so no assassination points, and yeah, that is my turn. Uh, this is a make or break right now. All right, you guys, so for movement, um, my warp talents did not run, obviously, because they have 12-inch movement, so they can go pretty far. Uh, my noise marines and my master of executions did run, so I was able to rest this uh, corner objective. Then um, my obliterator scooted back um, a little bit, so Scarbrand is still in range, um, so they can shoot him, but he shouldn't be able to charge them. Of course, at this point, I don't know if that will be his interest. Um, but yes, anyway, um, and then Lucius and the possessed moved and waded into the middle to go beat up some blood letters, um, as did the master of possessions and the venom crawler, not technically the middle, but the, kind of that little farther south area. Um, the Lord Discordant on Hellstalker stayed in combat, um, but the noise marines ran for it. Uh, I was able to get two just outside the wall. Um, and the rest are just, I guess, sitting back. They are sitting on the objective just barely, I think. Um, and then my Terminators poke their heads out to shoot some blood crushers. Um, and that was my uh, movement phase. All right, you guys. So Master Possessions tried to heal the Lord Discordant on Hellstalker. Did not work out uh, because he negated it. Um, I forget what the 40k term for that is. Denied. Uh, denied. Oh, okay. That was easy. Um, and then he tried to do um, pa uh, warp marked on the possessed. Failed. Uh, and then he tried to do delightful agonies on the possessed. And then he denied it with Karen. Karen. So yeah. just a lot of failure. And that was the second um, phase. The second phase. Yeah. Yeah. All right, you guys. So for shooting, my sonic marines on the top. So the blue guys uh, shot at his blood crushers. Um, I keep seeing the sergeant first, and I'm like, Blood Hunter, that doesn't sound right. Anyway, uh, so they were able to do six damage, so they killed off a Blood Crusher and did and took one to half life. Not that they bracket, so it doesn't actually matter. Um, and then my Obliterator shot at, shot at Scarbrand, and he saved all but one. Uh, not a lot went through to begin with, though, because I only had five shots. Uh, and so they did a flat four damage, bringing him to 18 wounds. Um, and then I went on, so Lucius shot at the blood letters. He rolled a two on his flamer. Um, oh my gosh. Well, I don't think that's relevant. Never mind. Um, but anyway, uh, so he, I don't know if he actually killed anything. Three, six, nine. Oh, he killed one blood letter. Yeah. So go Lucius. Uh, the Venom Crawler then shot at his blood crushers uh, down at the bottom. Um, now he had plus one to hit because he, he was corrupted by the Lord Discordant. Um, and so what had happened was um, he killed one. That was actually, that was it. Um, and then my Lord Discorder on Hellstalker tried to kill the Gorehound. Uh, two wounds went through, um, out of three. And then he saved one, failed one, and then he command pointed one. And so his Gorehound lived. Super annoying. Uh, but then he, my Noise Marine shot at his Blood Crushers, killed one, and left one at half life. No, they just killed one. And then the Chaos Terminator shot at the same Blood Crushers, and they did two damage because he saved. I think eight went through, he, so he saved. Six. Yeah. Six. That doesn't sound right. Well, eight whatever. was right. <laughs> anyway, he's still alive. So, um, and then, uh, last but not least, my Sonic, my Noise Marines all the way at the back, the green guy, shot at Scarbrand again. Um, so the sonic blasters ended up not doing anything. I think one wound went through because uh, they needed sixes, and um, he passed. Yeah, the one. Uh, anyway, but then the blast master shot with his heavy three, um, which is basically a souped-up las cannon, um, and he actually two went through. And because it's a sonic weapon and he's within 24 inches, 
which is half range for the Blastmaster, it was flat damage four and he failed two, so he did eight damage to Scarbrand, doing more than the Obliterators, whose only job is to shoot things. Um, and so that was interesting. So Scarbrand is officially bracketed, and that was my shooting phase. All right, you guys, so for charges, uh, I started from the bottom and just worked my way up because uh, there wasn't a super relevant need for charges because everything was pretty close. Um, so my noise marines actually charged the Gorehound um, because I hate him. So that was it. Um, and then my Venom Crawler charged his blood letters. He got in. Then my Possessed charged his blood letters in the middle. Um, and they got in, they rolled a 10, then Lucius did the same, he got a 10. Now they both stayed three inches away from his characters because I did not want them involved in this at all. Because um, they are both evil, like horrendous character killers. Uh, now Lucius isn't too bad himself, so it'll actually be interesting because he's going to fight one of them. I don't know which one it's going to be. Um, hopefully it's not both. <laughs> But anyway, um, and then, so that was my charges there, and then just all the way at the top, the Warp Talons charged both his Skull Cannon and his Blood Letters. Um, so I'm hoping to kill off those guys. Anyway, um, and those are my charges. Alright you guys, so for the combat phase, um, or the fight phase, um, I had a couple of choices to make because he had enough points to interrupt, which he eventually did. So what I did was, I had Lucius make the blood letters in the middle, uh, fight last, because he can do that once at the beginning of the fight phase. Um, and then I fought with my warp talents, I figured the Venom Crawler has enough toughness to hopefully survive. Um, and so the warp talents swung on his blood letters, um, and they killed seven of them, uh, leaving three left. And then um, he swung back uh, on my Venom Crawler and he did four damage, so two wounds went through. Um, and then I just went across the board. So my Possessed swung and they killed six, six of them maybe? Yeah. Um, I forgot that because they were within a certain range of Scarbrand, they actually all had plus one attack. And I didn't realize that Lucius allowed them to reroll hit rolls of one. So it's possible the whole squad actually would have just died. Um, but I was, I didn't realize the rules, so whatever. Anyway, and then Lucius swung, uh, he had eight attacks, um, but he had some really good saves, and I had some kind of crappy roll. Actually, I don't even think it was. I think he just did really good on your saves. So he only killed two, so there's actually still two blood letters in the middle for some reason. Um, and then my Venom Crawler swung, he killed three blood letters, uh, and then my Noise Marines, who actually had a deceptive amount of attacks, just barely killed the one hound. Um, and so that was nice. Um, and that, oh, and then, uh, he swung back in, in the middle, uh, and he did two damage to one of my possessed. And then, uh, up at the top, his blood, uh, letters and the skull cannon were able to kill off five of my warp talons. Actually, the blood letters did nothing up top. It was the skull cannon who, in melee, just slaughtered them. Yeah, yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. and... Yep. and that was the fight phase. All right, so for the morale phase, I started off in the center, the two orange uh, blood letters. They failed the morale test, they needed a one, and then I needed a three up to keep the last guy of the squad there, he failed. Then I went to my blood uh, letter squad up top, the red one, and they failed theirs, and one of them failed the attrition test, and one, the sergeant stayed. And then at the bottom, the yellow squad, they needed one, but uh, I'd have to roll a six for them to fail, and they rolled a three, so they were good. And then um, I only had my one uh, morale check, so my warp talent champion. Um, I needed, uh, I, f I would have failed on a five or a six, and I rolled a five. So I used my last command point to re-roll it, uh, and he rolled a two, so he passed. Um, and so he is still alive and holding up a skull cannon. All right, you guys, so for points, uh, I had one primary um, because his hounds were able to take that one no man's land objective off of me. Uh, conversion, I had two points because I'm holding a no man's land objective. Um, and then all of my secondaries, I got nothing on. So uh, nothing, well, two of them are end of the battle round. So we'll see at the end of his turn uh, if I have anything there. Um, but yes, so pretty bad on points right now. Um, but, you know, the game is just getting going, so. Alright, so for movement phase, uh, I spent two warp points, uh, warp storm points to make it so my whole army is unaffected by movement. Scarbrand moved up, and then 
uh, yeah, and so my Blood Hunter, the uh, purple Blood Crusher at the bottom moved up to get the Line of Sight of stuff. Karanak moved up as well. Then what happened was, uh, uh, my Blood Crushers up top on the red moved on to the objective, and then I brought in most of my reinforcements. I wasn't able to bring them all in because I couldn't find space for the last one that would make any sense, so I decided to wait a little bit. And so I brought in a full squad of Blood Letters. I, because they have a warp locus because of Scarbrand, they're able to be wholly within six inches of him and more than six inches away from an enemy. I then brought in the squad of flesh hounds at the bottom to reinforce, and then I brought um, a squad of blood letters up top, uh, eight inches away, because uh, their marines are within a, one, uh, within six inches of my demons, so their leadership is reduced by one, and my demons can deep strike. Uh, at their leadership level in distance. So they're at leadership 8, I can deep strike up to 8. And yeah, and that was my movement phase. Alright, so for the shooting phase, uh, my skull cannon up top I tried to shoot in melee, but my opponent pointed out it was a blast. Then my skull cannon on the bottom fired all the way to the north to the Sonic Marines, killed 1. Then my Scarbrand shouted at the possessed that were out there and did three wounds, so successfully, uh, no, two wounds, successfully killed one, and then wounded another, and that was my shooting phase. All right, so for the charge phase, I spent uh, two more warp storm points to make it so that I'm unaffected by movement, uh, distance, or anything, any modifiers, and then uh, Scarbrand charged the possessed, then the blood letters up top charged the obliterators, they failed. I spent my CP to re-roll it, rolled it one at a time, I made it in. Up top left, my green blood letters tried to charge the uh, sonic marines, they failed. So my blood crushers just made it in, they were right there. Then skull taker charged Lucius the Eternal at the very end, but I'm just mentioning it now. Uh, at the bottom, my green squad of flesh hands tried to charge their sonic blasters on the bottom, but that failed. And the blood hunter, I went with the safe thing and charged them with it. And then Karanak um, then tried to charge with Lord Discordant and the Marines, and he rolled double ones. And that was terrible. And that was my charge phase. Alright, so for the fight phase. Uh, so, even though, uh, so a lot of his fights he had the ability to fight first, and his Lucius the Eternal made my Skull Taker fight last. And so I went where I thought I could do the most damage. So at the bottom, the Skull Crusher swung on the Plague Marines, or the Noise Marines, did absolutely nothing to them. Then he had his Master of Executions up top swing on my Skull Crushers up top, and he did, he successfully killed one and did two damage. Then I had that squad, uh, well, no, 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 who else was safe? Oh yeah, and then I had uh, my yeah, that squad of uh, Blood Crushers up top swing on the Noise Marines killed one. And then, after that, then he swung with his Noise Marines on my Blood Crusher on the bottom and killed them off. Then, he had his, whatchamacallit, his Noise Marine swing on my Blood, cr blood Crusher up top did nothing. And then, uh, my Blood Letters, my Blue Squad of Blood Letters that charges Obliterators with 10 guys, with 19, or 9 guys, because one died in Overwatch, with 19 attacks, did only one wound to them. Absolutely trash. They, mi they missed so much. It was so horrible. Ugh. And after that, uh, Scarbrand, I just had him swing, and he deleted the Possessed. Easy. Uh, well, just barely. He did exactly four wounds to them in total in the end, and uh, he failed all four of them. Then, after that, uh, my yellow squad of Bloodletters swung on his uh, Venom Throat? Venom Crawler thing? Yeah. And they successfully killed it. Or they did not consolidate. Uh, then, after that, my. Whatchamacallit. Then, uh, he had his uh, last Warp Talon swing on my Blood Reaper, or the sergeant of the Bloodletter squad that was there, he successfully killed it. Then my skull cannon swung on him and wiped him out. Then after that, yeah, uh, Lucius swung on my skull taker and did absolutely nothing to him. Then when it was my skull taker's turn to swing, absolutely deleted Lucius, uh, dealing nine wounds to him. And then Lucius, when he died, did a d3 mortal wounds, which ended up with two wounds against my skull taker. 
and uh, then up top, we didn't film this because we ended beforehand, but the obliterators swung on my blood letters and killed four of them in melee. So that was absolutely disappointing. And that was my, well, the whole fight phase. All right, so for the morale phase, my blue squad of blood letters that failed to do really anything uh, needed a two, they rolled a two. And that was the end of the morale phase. All right, so for points, I controlled one at the start. I control one in the middle, so conversion. I have not gotten anything by Nourished by Terror. Reality Rebels, I have two quarters and I have the dead center. And I successfully killed off one of his characters with Lucius and gained three points for assassination. And that is where I am at. Now, uh, it's overall it's still not looking good though. All right, you guys, so for movement, um, my noise marines, my red squad down at the bottom uh, kind of hugged the edge of the objective. Um, and then they started the action for my secondary to claim this corner for Slanesh. Uh, then my Lord Discordant moved farther forward, and then my Master of Possession tucked into the building there. Um, my Terminators ran forward into the middle because it's time for them to do what they were made to do, uh, which is kill stuff. Um, my Obliterators were going to run, but they're so fat and so slow, they actually could not move past the blood letters the direction I wanted to go, so they stayed. Um, and then my Master of Executions, because he was no longer in combat with the Blood Hunter, is just going to move up to the Skull Cannon and, and see what happens. Um, and that was my movement phase. Alright, you guys, so for the Psychic phase, um, it was kind of a sad Psychic phase, but I guess, anyway, not important. Um, so Master of Possession uh, cast... Um, delightful at no not delightful agonies packed a flesh on the Lord Discordant because I didn't realize he was a demon engine um, And so he healed him for a full three and then when I realized he was a demon engine He healed another one because demon engines do that by default uh, Then the master of possession tried to give himself a five up feel no pain Rolled double ones took perils of the warp. So he took a single wound um, And then I was like, okay, well, what do I do left? And then so he tried to smite Karanak which went off on a 12 which was unfortunately another Perils of the Warp, but he only took another one wound, so he's at one wound left. Um, and he actually did six damage to Karanak, um, and so he straight up just smushed the poor dog's brain, um, which was nice. And then the Lord Discordant's Relic, uh, Fatal Sonancy went off um, and did two mortal wounds to the Flesh Hounds, so he was actually able to take one of them off. Um, and that was the psychic phase. Alright you guys, so for my shooting phase, my noise brains, the blue ones up top, shot at his blood hunter, or skull crusher, whatever it is. Um, with their pistols, they were able to do one damage to it, unfortunately not both. So two wounds went through, but he saved one, which was unfortunate. Um, then the obliterator shot, uh, and they wiped out the blood letters that were left, all five of them, because um, they can shoot into combat. Um, and then my Lord Discordant shot at his Flesh Hounds, killing one off. Um, and then my Chaos Terminator, so I used the Stratagem on them, so they ran. Um, but I used the Stratagem, Relentless Devastation. Um, so basically they counted as having remained stationary, so they were able to shoot. Uh, and they put everything into Scarbrand. Unfortunately, they only did two damage, so that was not ideal. Um, but it is what it is. Um, and that was my shooting phase. Yep. All right, you guys, so for my charge phase, I started with my Master of Executions, um, and he rolled really badly, but he got in because he was right next to him, so no shocks. Um, and then you know how you kind of prioritize which one you might need the reroll on? And you do that one first. Wasn't relevant because I had no command point, so it was just whatever happened, happened. But my Terminators got in. I needed a seven, they got an eight. Um, so I avoided the terrain on the charge because that would have minus two them and that would have shot it in the foot. Um, so only a couple were able to fit in, but once they pile in, I'm hoping it'll be a little better. Um, but they got in and then my Lord Discordant charged the Flesh Hounds. He needed an eight, he rolled a nine, so he got in. And then my Master of Possessions, because I don't, at this point, he's only got one wound left and um, I don't think he'll survive till my next turn. Um, but I figured, what the heck, why not? Give it a go. And uh, so he got in, uh, and he's just sitting on the corner of those flesh hounds. And um, that was my charge phase. Unless I missed something. Nope, that was it. Yep. Got you guys. So uh, for my fight phase, so he had no points to interrupt. 
and um, I either charged or being Emperor's champion, Emperor's children, they're Slanesh, so they had always strike first. So I literally just went from the top down. So my blue squad of Marines swung on his Blood Hunter and did nothing. Really pathetic. Um, then my Master of yeah, Execution swung and he brought the Skull Cannon down to two life. Um, I don't remember how much it had, but so he did at least six damage, I think. Probably eight. Um, and then um, I left the the fight in the middle because that's kind of a that was a big deal fight. Uh, and my master of possession swung, he killed one maybe, um, and then my lord discordant swung and killed the rest. Um, and then went over to the fight with the terminator, so they killed the skull taker just barely, so they only did the three damage left that he had. Um, and then the rest swung on Scarbrand, taking him. Honestly, he only had eight or nine damage, so they really only did one or two wounds to him. Yeah, he had seven wounds great. left, so... So he only did two damage. No, that's not right. He must have had nine. Okay. Because a power fist went through and then, like, two accursed weapons. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so they swung. So now he's down to five. Um, so now he's had a ridiculous amount of attacks. Um, but he swung back and he killed four Terminators. Yes, four Terminators. Um, and yeah. Then, oh, and then he swung back. <laughs> yeah, and so um, my Blood and... Crusher up top swung against the Marine, uh, Noise Marines, did nothing. The Skull Cannon swung against his Master of Executions and did four wounds. Then Scarbrand, yes, he did swing and kill four Terminators with his ten attacks. But he's hitting on fours now, so he goes up in attacks, but he goes down in weapon skill. And that was the yeah. fight phase. All right. All right. So my Terminators are at minus one leadership, and they lost four guys, which takes them to leadership five. So on a six, they will fail. Yes. <sighs> I don't have any points to reroll. One dies so and attrition test. Okay. I will take. You're um, at half strength. So yeah, ones so, and twos. Yep. So that's what five left. Yeah. So. One more. Uh, so one more. That's not good. And that's two victory points for my uh, secondary objective. All right, you guys. So for points, um, at the beginning of the round, I held two objectives. So I got eight points in primaries. I got two points for conversion. Um, adorn the canvas. So um, I was able to get five points for that one. Rise to glory. I killed his skull taker, so I got two points there. Um, and for the dark gods, I got another table corner for that. Um, giving me a solid two points or two notes there um, and that was all my points all right so nothing in the my command phase but for movement uh, my yellow unit of blood letters moved up and then my green unit of blood letters at the top moved forward six inches and then essentially what happened was um, I brought in my final squad of blood letters at the back there to be in a 50 50 split we'll see what happens and then uh, finally, one of the big things is uh, I we didn't mention it, but in the last morale test, we forgot to film it or mention it. But I spent my five uh, warp storm points to heal my entire army, so all my characters and stuff healed. So my skull cannon fighting his master of executions is at four wounds. The blood crusher uh, fighting his blue noise marines is at three wounds now. Scarbrand is back up to seven. And my yellow squad of blood letters healed one guy back up. And that was my morale phase, movement phase, command phase. Alright, so in my shooting phase, the bottom skull cannon fired at the his Lord Discordant on Hellstalker did nothing. Then Scarbrand yelled at the Terminators in front of him, did one wound. Alright, so for the charge phase, essentially what happened is my green unit of blood letters charged his blue uh, Sonic Marines. They failed and so I had to re-roll it and they just barely made it. Then I had my yellow unit of blood letters charge his chaos terminators and they made it. Then just to try I had my purple unit of blood letters charge his green sonic marines up top and they didn't make it. Alright so for the fight phase uh, so I had my yellow unit of blood letters swing first and they killed a bunch of the terminators just straight up. They killed three of them in total. Uh, and then up top, he started having his swings back, so his uh, noise marine swung on my... No, he had his uh, his character. 
yeah, his character swing on my skull cannon uh, would have killed me. Did four wounds exactly. I spent a command point to reroll one. He made it because he needed, it was a 50 50, and he survived. Then I uh, had my green squad bloodletter swing on his noise marines. They wiped them out. They consolidated towards the character. Uh, then my skull cannon swung on him and killed him uh, with his malefic weapons. Then Scarbrand, uh, oh no, his Terminator swung on Scarbrand, did one wound. And then Scarbrand swung and wiped him out. Uh, and that was the fight phase. Alright, so at the end of that, so I controlled one at the beginning. I got conversion, so two points were there. Reality rebels, so this time I had the two table quarters, the center just barely. But because I deep striked all those guys in the back and because my yellow squad is technically in the bottom right quarter, I outnumber the amount of models he has in there. So I take that as well, so I gained four points for Reality Rebels. And that brings me to 42 points, and it's actually pretty looking kind of good in my favor, but we'll see. Alright, so due to time, that's what we're going to call her, time, we have to call it there, but what the? Uh, we do... <laughs> Yeah, we both got that. So we basically did a bunch of theory hammering. And at our next point, we will gain uh, a bunch of stuff. So he will take my back objective. I will take his back objective in the next turn. We rolled a, We did a bunch of theory hammering and on the most key important stuff. And so what we came to is that the very end, I'll end up with uh, a certain amount of minimums. He will also have minimums like that. And I will keep gaining more points. I'll max out reality rebels easy. Assassination, I will not be able to get the final one. Um, uh, we basically came to the conclusion that it looks like it's going to be completely for me, just based on movements. We did theory hammering. He would kill. He, yeah, he would kill Scarbrand. Uh, he easily gets to my back line, but I also get to my back line because of his stuff. So in order for him to kill Scarbrand, he'd have to move up his obliterators, and then my back uh, uh, bloodletters would charge his back line, take it completely over, and because they're obsec. Uh, even if I killed none of the five noise marines on there, I would, would take the objective simply because I'd have more bodies with pile-in and uh, uh, consolidation and stuff like that. And so we did all this uh, back and forth, and it's pretty much straightforward in my favor. Yeah. And so we're going to give it to Corn Demons just barely. Horrible back and forth. Alright, so... End of the game. MVP, LVP. For me, Corn Demons. For LVP, it's actually a bit tight. Well, so the Skull Cannons failed in their shooting the entire time. They killed nothing with their shooting. Not once, I believe. Maybe, like, one guy was at best. And then the Flesh Hounds, who ran in, did nothing, died. Overall. And it's really the bottom of the barrel here. However, in the end, I'm going to give it to the Flesh Hounds, because at the very least, in melee, the Skull Cannon did kill the Warp Talons in their entirety. So that was something. And then coming to MVP, we have the Bloodletters who, when they actually got into combat and actually hit, except for the ones who hit the Obliterators, they slaughtered. They really just dropped the Terminators and they were very strategic in the game for holding objectives and taking over places. So they were very important, very valuable, but a mix of failure. And then finally, Scarbrand. I mean, even though he buffed my enemies, gave them a bunch of attacks, he survived. He slaughtered uh, technically only five Terminators, <coughs> but he brought in a lot of buffs. He was the Locust. He helped me shift uh, teleport guys in around here and there. So he was more strategically useful than what he did on the output, and he did a Theory Hammer die to the Obliterators. Uh, so it's actually a really tough call to say. So at best, I'm going to have to say that uh, Scarbrand was the MVP because both Bloodletters and him were strategically important. They both participated heavily in bringing me victory, but like, I'm just going to say just barely him because technically he killed more Terminators than that one squad of Bloodletters. And uh, that's why I'm going to have to give him the MVP. All right, over to you. Yeah, so, oh, you know what? I know who would be an MVP for me. Freaking Terminators. What? They did um, stuff. <laughs> not really. The only thing they did was sit in the back and then shoot uh, Scarbrand. They only did like two damage. He regained it. And then um, mm -hmm. they 
did three wounds to the skull taker and that was it so yeah. anyway um so mvp lord discord on hellstalker i actually really like him he's got a lot of natural attacks um and then uh i don't know he's just see he's kind of like just a really solid model he regains a wound every whatever um and so i actually really like using him um he also is does stuff against vehicles so that's kind of cool um, and then LVP, it was originally Lucius, because I forgot about how much I dislike the Terminators in this. The, um, but so Lucius, uh, not that he was bad, he's actually a really great character killer. I rolled really bum rolls. And then on top of that, demon saves, they're just, there's no, no plus or minuses for it. So it's just, it is what it is. Like AP is not relevant. <coughs> Uh, so if he rolls well, it's just that's what it is. So um, so Lucius got bummed, but that's why he's in the LVPs. The Terminators, however, really didn't do anything. I don't actually super care for the the um, Chaos Terminators. Um, they don't really have a lot of great options in my head, or a lot of really like strong damage. Um, and so I mean, sure they have a lot of shots with their combi bolters, but that's pretty much it. Um, maybe some resilience. So I would probably take them in smaller squads and have them more for holding a key point as opposed to actually trying to deal damage, which like the warp talons or the possessed or uh, maybe even a hellbrood or something would probably do better at. Um, and yeah, so that's what I would say. So MVP, Lord Discordant, <coughs> LVPs, Terminators, and technically Lucius. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so Corn, uh, what do you think? How'd you like him? Well, I'm constantly seeing it as like, uh, demons are a greater demon army. You have to bring a bunch of them. It's like, I see this around a lot, because the small guys, they just don't do enough. Uh, sadly, I, there's a lot of cool things in the Corn list, but I like, if I had two more greater demons, and, uh, just much less blood letters or skull crushers. Uh, I would have been a very different game. I would have been slaughtering you on all points because corn guys are very, very, very strong. But, but it, it's just disappointing that because blood letters are very strong. It could be a horde, but in the end, uh, it just feels like I'm lacking in a lot. Maybe I shouldn't use any kind of deep striking unless I'm like Zinch and stuff, but. Uh, yeah, I've had a lot of bad results with deep striking. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, even using like this, if they could get their charges off and do stuff, they could easily really do a lot of damage. But they need buffs, because they miss a lot. And even though they're strength 5, it's like... I mean, they did a lot of good damage to the Terminators, but a squad of 8 killed 3 Terminators after charging... But only getting in, like, they got a charge off because they were right next to them. So it's like, yeah, I'm really, uh, Corn is a very interesting, uh, fight list. But overall, it feels like you just have to have greater demons, uh, to be able to make up for it. So it's more like, a you play it very similar to Imperial Knights with a, some a guard auxiliary. That's kind of what I'm thinking that demons overall is, just in practice, sadly. Because a lot of them are just so expensive for points. Uh, yeah, so what do you think on your Emperor's um, Children? So I really enjoyed Emperor's Children. Um, their um, no ballistic skill or weapon skill modifier thing was actually a pretty big deal. It doesn't really sound like it at first, um, but it was. Mm -hmm. um, so like with all the assault weapons, you can run and shoot without any issues. Um, I really liked the Noise Marines. I thought they were actually really cool. When they got to shoot. Um, yeah, so like they're, all their guns are assault, even their heavy one has the two options, because um, that's originally what did huge chunks of damage to Scarbrand. Um, yeah. I didn't, I mean, obviously I didn't care for the Terminators, um, but I actually like them. I think it's interesting, they have so few options for Chaos, like the book itself is a thick codex. Mm -hmm. But as far as actual unit choices, they don't have heaps of them. I really enjoyed the Obliterators, I think. They technically only have one gun each, but it has three different rounds. And then they have basically power fists as well. Um, and so those guys are interesting. Um, I, uh, I think um, with Chaos, unlike Space Marines, you have just a bunch of different, like, like 50 different units. With these guys, you only have a handful of different units. So I think um, how they mesh together and how they blend along with the individual army stratagems and whatever I think is a much bigger deal. 
mm -hmm. uh, for chaos. Um, but I mean, I liked it. Like even the the base marines, you know, the noise marines had three yeah. attacks based. So even like they're still okay, like no matter what units you have around. Um, now I don't super care for like the plague marines or the whatever. You might as well just play the death guard or the whatever to have them in. I'm sure there's ways that you fit them in and it makes sense. But based off of my second time playing them, I don't I don't see it. Um, I would rather spend points elsewhere. So like maybe more squads are possessed or, or something like that, you know. So um, yeah. I actually really like Emperor's Children. Um, they have quite a few interesting um, legion uh, legions in their book and their traits and stuff, which makes it pretty cool. I think you could do quite a few random lists uh, that would be fun. Um, but yeah, so I I, I like Chaos. Um, they have it's weird because even though they're Space Marines, they're you know Chaos Space Marines, they have a lot less choices. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's really how everything meshes together. I think. Yeah, it's, they have a lot of rules. They just don't have a lot of model choices. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of rules that I, I forgot about. Um, so even like the Lord Discordant, um, his relic, each turn he could have done mortal wounds, but I forgot about it. So instead of mortal wounding his way out of that skull crusher or whatever, he was stuck there because I literally just forgot about it. Mm -hmm. um, little things like that. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed Chaos. Uh, all right, so GG's GG.